Solving inequalities is very similar to solving equations. You still move the terms around the same as before. For example, this negative 3 moves over here as a plus 3. And I remove the 2x by subtracting 2x from the left side. That brings us down to 2x less than or equal to 18. And then, dividing both sides by 2, x is less than or equal to 9. Now, usually you're asked to draw a graph when you're uh, solving inequalities. That's fairly simple. Just draw the part of the number line that involves what you're talking about here. Uh, x is uh, equal to 9. That's why I have a filled in circle at the 9 and then showing all numbers on the number line less than 9. This is how you graph it when you're graphing in the set of real numbers. Uh, one thing that can happen when you're uh, doing the solving of an inequality is you could end up with a negative in front of the variable. You see I brought the 10x over as negative 10x and uh, brought the negative 5 over as plus 5. Now I have to divide both sides by negative 4. When that happens the direction on the inequality reverses. This happens every time you multiply or divide by a negative number. And we get x is greater than negative 7. This time, because x is not equal to negative 7, I have an open circle at the negative 7. Just to show you an alternate way of doing this, I took the same equation and I moved the, uh, the 6x over here, subtracted 6x, brought the 23 over to this side, it's negative 23. This time I have a positive 4 in front of the x. So this time when I divide by 4, I do not change the direction of that inequality. And you see, I got the same answer both times. x is greater than negative 7. This also says x is greater than negative 7. So you can solve it either way, you're going to get the same answer. Sometimes you'll be given a question like this. This is kind of a doubled inequality. And um, because there's an x in the middle and you don't have them on the outside, there's a very easy way of solving this. I want to remove the 3 from this part of it. So if I remove 3 from here, I have to take 3 away from 11. And I also have to take 3 away from negative 3. And that results in a double inequality that looks like that. At this point I can divide everybody by 2 and that's it. I'm done. I've got the x trapped between negative 3 and 4. And uh, I just show that as, a, as a, a piece of the number line. Everything less than 4. See I don't include the 4 uh, because it's strictly less than or the negative 3 and it's, it's trapped. It's, it's like it's sandwiched in between the negative 3 and the 4. Now one last example. You see this is a little more complicated because I have an x over here. So I can't use the same trick that I used the last time and just remove the 1. So what I have to do, I have to split it into two cases. The first case goes this far. And the second case is the 2x plus 1 less than 9. And I need the word AND here because in mathematics AND means this has to be satisfied and that has to be satisfied. So I go through the solving of both situations, uh, same as I talked about before, just moving my terms around. And what I've ended up with is x is less than 4. And at the same time it's got to be greater than or equal to negative 4. And I can just slide these two together with a statement like that. And again, on the number line I've got uh, all x's that are greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than 4. Again, just a part of the number line.